Hey everybody, Michelle Holling Brooks, and I felt guided to just bring in a beautiful invitation to help kind of harness and work with the solstice energies that are up right now for us. And if you are in the Northern Hemisphere, we're in the, the June solstice brings in the beginning of the summer and that beautiful fire energy within us to grow and expand and to shine, right? And if you are in the Southern Hemisphere, this is bringing you into winter. It's bringing you into that place of kind of stillness of like, kind of highlighting and, and shining kind of a softer light on ourselves to say, hey, what is it that I want to create in this next cycle? What is something that I really want to bring in and allow it to be highlighted and be present and to work with me through this next creation cycle? And to do that, I need to go into stillness. So in both of these um, types of solstices, whether you're in the Northern or the Southern Hemisphere, it's inviting us into acknowledging, you know, what is it that we want to focus on? What is it that we want to allow to um, be highlighted for us? Like, where do we allow our system to bring us into awareness of opportunities, creation cycles, experiences, expressions that could be available to us if we can kind of get out of that rat race and allow ourselves to kind of come into that still moment and choose how do we want to focus ourselves? Where do we want that energy to go? And what do we want to feed and nourish and support with this beautiful solstice sun energy that is that giver of life, right? And so one of the systems that I typically almost always bring in a practice and a balance for is that five element system that I just talked about, you know, that summer is associated with a fire element in the traditional Chinese element medicine five element model and it's also associated with a water element um, for winter right and so that we have those two dichotomies and i usually bring in a little bit to help us balance those two however as i was getting together i really felt guided to instead come through a different doorway a different system that i really love and for those of you who don't know i um, I am certified in the system and I work with it. I just kind of keep it behind the scenes a little bit, um, but it really felt like it wanted to come forward. And that is um, the astrological system, right? The, the archetypal patterns that are the planets themselves and how those combinations come together to really influence, quote unquote, the psychic undercurrent and weather that is moving through us and how either sometimes that can feel like we're getting taken out of the knees by that psychic weather and those stellar combinations and then sometimes how can we harness them and to work with them just like the spring energy and the summer energy and the wood and all the different elements of the different systems they're there they're present we're walking into summer whether i want to walk into it or not in the northern hemisphere so the question is how do i want to partner with that how do i want to work with that energy that's in there and the same goes for the archetypal patterns that are the quote planets in astronomy right so i am a traditional western astrologist which means that i'm housed in looking at it through the tropical um zodiac and then also looking in from that you know 14th to 17th century kind of point of view and working with it but i do work with the modern planets so the june solstice is when the sun is entering into cancer as a zodiacal sign and what i like to look at and what i've been trained to work with the the signs of the zodiac is through more through the planets that rule them than the zodiac signs themselves and so i'd like to in this give you a little bit of insight into what is the sun and what does that represent archetypally and so why is it such a highlight right now through these solstices and also what is the moon and what does it represent within us and how do we balance these two often kind of can feel like yin and yang because that's what they are energies within us and instead of them having push me pull me and boxy matching each other which these solstice energies can often feel like can we bring them into harmony into balance and seeing how they can shake hands and work together which they are ultimately designed to do as that yin and yang energy right so i want to share with you a couple of those insights in this vlog just 
really quick tidbits so you can have some uh, some understanding and then a practice at the end of this blog that really will help you kind of harness, understand, and work with the psychic weather that is coming through these beautiful archetypes that are the planets so that it can support you in really taking up the support that's available to us during these um, stellar combinations versus feeling kind of wapowed by them. And as we shift from one rhythm to another, as the sun is, is leaving, um, working in Gemini and coming into Cancer, you know, what does that shift mean? And what is that inviting us into shifting to within us as well? So first let's explore the sign that the sun is getting ready to ingress in, right? And that is that moon rolled sign of Cancer. So the moon is that yin energy, that beautiful universal mother energy. It represents the ability to hold us, the land within us, the culture, the rhythms, the support, the familiar that is kind of that comes together that helps us feel a sense of being held, of being nurtured, right? The moon energy invites us into this paradox that as we receive, we can also give, right? And how are we in that flow with these rhythms that are coming in and working with us? So it asks us to both be the caregiver and the receiver, which can be tricky. You know, sometimes we're really good at caring for others, but then we don't allow ourselves to be cared for and we don't open up to be to be nurtured. Um, internally or externally we don't allow ourselves to be held you know depending on how the moon within us has experienced life it really dictates like how we view our sense of being held and is it a warm feeling or does it feel sterile and separate and off to the side right that sense then of home that central place that there's a place for me to soften kind of exhale, take off the masks from the day, and that I have a community that bands together, that meets me in that space. The moon really universally represents all of that. And, and then how do we feel that we access that or how do we not, right? And depending on your own personal um, experiences that you've had and then your natal chart in an astrology, that's going to really give you some insights as to how you want to work with this energy or how it, this energy might actually feel very um, scary or threatening or unavailable to you, right? The moon also has this other aspect of it where it helps create the rhythms, right? Without the moon, we wouldn't have the seasons that we have, right? We wouldn't have the changing of the tides of that ability to be in the ebb and the flow. And so when we're in the, when we're in that flow, we're moving, we're doing, we're walking towards creation, we're setting little seeds in and growing them and watching them grow. But we also need to have this ebb. We need to have this rest, this relaxation, this ability to receive. And it takes that, that back and forth kind of flow, like the tides coming in and out to create that inner rhythm within us. Without it, we get stuck in one pattern, all do, 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 or all rest, 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 right? All one way of being, all one way of thinking. The changeability that the moon brings into us brings us inspiration, insights, guidance, that intuitive hit. It holds the vastness of the changeability that's within our life so that we can feel that there's a way to kind of be in that pocket with it and move and be in flow with it. That's ideally what's happening when it's balanced. So that's the moon. That's what it's up to. And that's what we're being invited into as the sun is coming into Cancer, into that idea of this changeability, this being in the ebb and the flow, having balance between doing and receiving and resting and movement and action. And then also a willingness to be held. What binds us together? What bind, bands us together and helps us feel a sense of community of home, of familiarity within ourselves and within our environment, right? So that we can go out there and create and do what we want to do. That's where the sun comes in. The sun has that yang energy. It's focused. It's driven. It's action oriented. It wants to see what it can explore and, and, and 
allow itself to be sh to shine and to step on that stage of life and say hello here i am right it's also something that archetypally really allows us to step into our will when we're in our sun energy we feel confident we feel courageous we feel like curious and able to step into motion to match our heart's desires and really be able to have that sense of inner leadership and empowerment coming from within us, our own North Star energy, that fire within us, guiding us as we stride out into life and feeling that we have that with us. So at any moment that we feel lost in the dark, we feel like we can, quote, get a flashlight, shine around, find our way, activate that North Star within us and, and be into motion again, right? It creates this idea that we can create the nucleus of how our life is working, the parameters of it, how we want to constellate the world around us and based off of our will and the choices that we make and how we move into beautiful leadership and self-sovereignty with that, that we can create that. We can make that world match what it is that our heart's desires wants, right? So a strong energy right now in the Northern Hemisphere is really coming in saying, hey, what is it that you want to create? What is it that your heart has burning within it that it wants to do? But it's mixing the strong, pulsing, vibrating, vitality, desire to get out there and get her done, you know, all of that. I can move any mountain that's in my way. I can, you know, summon it. I can go through it, over it, under it, whatever I need to do. And I can also get the tides to go into my perfect world is mixing with this beautiful moon ruled cancer energy and it's saying, hey, yes, absolutely make those choices, stride out there. But also you need to be aware that you're not always the one in charge of these tides and things are gonna be changing and moving and you can't only be on, you also have to have rest and recharge. And so the two energies can either clash with each other and struggle it out or they can start to soften into each other and say, hey, I'm gonna be willing to work with the yes and, right? So these can be two tricky energies to balance within one and what typically happens is one tries to dominate the other within our system. I'm either, yes, the world is gonna move on its own time frame and ask me to move in and out of it and so therefore maybe I shouldn't make the plans, maybe I should just like step back and just be in more of a responsive, reactive point of view and work with the changing tides and not have a, a an own personal North Star going because somebody else's needs, somebody else's rhythm, somebody else's like requests are going to come in and I'm going to have to tend to those. So I'm going to abandon self or I'm only going to put self in and I'm not going to allow myself to work in community, to work with the tides that are changing that I don't know about. So this, these are the, the discussions that you might be feeling in your energy field right now. What do I want to create and how will that work? with my community, with my tribe, with my family, um, with my the land that I live on. You know, how is that gonna work with the different responsibilities and things that I have for caretaking? And do I feel like it's an either or, or can I find a yes and in here? So here are some of the main questions that I love to invite people into exploring when these energies are up for, for them. And right now they're up for all of us because this is the psychic weather that's out there is what happens when we want to be in a different spot or timing of our lives than what is coming in is where we're at. Like, I think I should be here. I wish I was here. I don't want to be dealing with this particular situation or environment that's happening right now. Like, look for those divides where we're trying to say, hey, I want a different rhythm and I'm trying to make the tides or the changing seasons match where I want it to be versus figuring out how to have a yes and over here, right? So that's one of them. What happens when we feel the loss of something familiar, right? The homeland within us. And we feel like we're being asked to stride out past that or it's being shifted and changed maybe in a way that we might be initiating within ourselves, but some of it might not be being initiated from within us. What happens to us when 
that familiar feeling is asked to expand, to grow, to shift or change. Even if we're the ones initiating that change, that can feel um, unsettling within our system, right? And how do we help support it? What happens when the natural organic rhythms of change are coming forward that says, hey, it's time to move into this next progression for you and your life or something in your life. And we're kind of like, whoa, wait, I didn't want it to change. I was perfectly content with it the way it was. This was not my will to have this thing evolve to its next level of its natural life cycle, right? And how do we work with that? How do we find our footing and feel held while also saying this is my will, my heart's desires, and I want to shine and I want to initiate these changes, these actions, these ways of being out into the world, right? This is what happens when the sun comes into cancer. There's a potential push me, pull me energy within ourselves that really has that locking us in between this is my own personal will and desire and this is what my intuitive senses my inner guidance is coming forward to say how to work with that and also work with the other things that maybe sometimes we don't get to see right the tides and the shifting of an impact of a choice outside of our personal bubble our sun our nucleus right of how we do it And so these solstices to me are a great place that I love to, in my own personal practice, pause and take a look at some of these things. The winter solstice has a little bit of a different energy because it's going into a different sign. So I'll talk about that one when we get there in December. But this one is that sense of how do I nourish myself, support myself, give myself that sense of being held and still also feel that I'm at the helm of my own ship, right? Able to surf with life on life's terms and also create on my heart's desires. That's the tricky um, balance that we're searching for during this beautiful solstice time that it can really bring in of how to bring harmony to those versus one winning over the other, sticking us in dualistic um black and white thinking within our system. I just recorded another um, beautiful podcast, another beautiful video over on my new YouTube videos uh, podcast that I have called Soulful Practices. Oh my gosh, I'm loving that that offering over there. So if you haven't had a chance to check in um, and to see that, you might wanna like go ahead and click on the links below. Or if you're in YouTube watching this right now, just go to the channel, the Unbridled Change channel, and you'll see the Soulful Practices podcast. And the one was on episode so 10 and it was about Spencer Johnson was the quote so it's each week I'm taking a different quote or teaching um, theory and kind of building out a practice around that and this one was from Spencer Johnson he was an author um, he was also a physician um, and kind of like a mystic in disguise as I like to call it and he wrote this self-help book called um, who moved my cheese and he also wrote some other stuff but that's what he's most known for and the quote that i worked on in episode 10 was what would i do if i wasn't afraid and i love this quote for so many reasons because it really brings forward the same question that the sun and the moon are asking us you know the moon is our emotional body it's that survival base body within us too that we do need to honor that there are things that we need to tend to there are things and caution can sometimes help us keep us safe right but too much of that too much fear energy too much worrying about what are the changing tides going to be and how am i going to have my footing and i need to know what that footing is before i'm willing to move when we have too much of that we lose and we dampen the sun energy within us right we lose that ability to be feeling confident in ourselves to to work with the changing tide and to find a way to have our own personal wills and desires manifested in and with the beautiful different energies that are coming in that are outside of our control right And so in this book, Who Moved My Tea, just let me quick, if you'll indulge me for a second, there are like kind of four main characters, two are mice and two are these little people-esque things, um, hem and haw, and they live in this maze. 
And the cheese is the symbolism for the things that we want to experience and work with, the things that help us feel comfortable, familiar, the experiences, the joy, the laughter, the family, the different goals, you know, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually that we want to have in this lifetime. And the cheese is the representation of that. And everyone kind of knows where their stuff is and it feels pretty good. But then one day they go to their spot where they think that stuff is and they realize it's gone. Who moved my cheese right and so the the two mice like instantaneously are like wow okay not here off they go into the maze exploring searching seeking filling up their cup right and the two like little people uh kind of sit there for a second and they're like oh did what did we do wrong did something happen you know they kind of start to get in this little bit of a debate should we just like keep showing up here thinking that maybe it'll come back the things that i love the things that i like will light themselves back up in my life um you know maybe we should go look for something but what if what if we don't find it what if we lose it what if it comes back here and and we weren't here you know like all these what ifs and fears start to come in that start to diminish their ability to make a different choice, right? To stride on out there into that unknown and to feel safe and confident doing that. Well, one of the little beans finally says, you know what? I think I'm going to take throw caution to the wind and I'm going to start to see what else is out there. I only know this one little aspect. There has to be more stuff, more experience in more ways of being. So he starts heading out there and discovers like little cheese here and big cheese there and all these other things. And then he remembers like the other people might be in this maze too, trying to figure things out. And so he starts leaving little messages on the wall, right? And starts to share like, hey, this is what I figured out about this one. And this is this, and this is that. And this was my journey here. And this is what I experienced down this part of life and this was what it's over here and pretty soon the comfort level of this one little being even when he finds experiences that he likes he loves he feels good and confident about he still wants to go explore he still wants to see a little what else is out there and how can I just not be prepared for when this cheat moves how can I truly switch gears into like what new, beautiful, amazing gifts and experiences can I find within myself and within others? And hey, I want to leave some breadcrumbs for those around so they don't feel alone. So they feel like there's some universal support from them coming in, right? And so that's one little guy that goes out there and finds a way to have his son present with him in the changeability that's happening in this maze. Um, the moon and finding a sense of community, right? Like he's not doing it all in isolation. It's not just all him, all for himself, what he can get out of it. That's the sun that's out of balance. It's like, no, I want to feel in partnership, not only with the changeability that can happen, but also with the other members that are in this maze with me that I might or might not get to see or interact with, but I can bring in and serve the whole, right? So that's that beautiful moon energy and the light where the other little being just really struggles, like really kind of sits there and tries to say, no, I'm not moving, it'll come back, mistakes have been made, victimizing self, feeling victimized by the universe, really eventually starts to move, but not really moving. It's more out of feeling like forced into change, walking past the little messages that are on the wall, walking past the support, the like of the other beings coming and being like, hey, there's more stuff. Trust me. This is this is okay. We can move. And it's just just kind of head down, kind of plodding around, finding little crumbs here and there, but never really feeling connected or in alignment. Eventually, you know, eventually that other being has a full circle moment and can come into more of the energy of the other one. And so these little characters really kind of represent us, right? So different parts of us just get stuck. They get bogged down. Who moved my cheese and why is it gone? And I want it back and I'm not willing to move. And I'm going to go on this whole shadow detective thing to try to figure out what happened so that it doesn't happen to me again. I'm protected, right? I can't get caught off guard again. Um, and then parts of us that maybe just kind of just keep moving, 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 um, and maybe don't get to experience the connectivity, right? And then there's the parts of us that want to move, experience, and help and support ourselves and for others along the way. And we have all these different aspects within us. 
And so the practice that I have for this vlog and using the beautiful universal energies that are up and helping balance them and really harness them, this solstice, is that finding that confidence, that sun energy in the light to stride out into the unknown changeability of life on life's terms. Like, hey, I'm going to create create what I want and I'm going to still be trying to move towards my heart's desires and when a left fielder comes in, I can take a moment for sure and kind of assess that situation, but then I'm going to ask, okay, what else is here? Bringing in that moon energy, knowing that there is that nourishment, that support, that inspiration to be flexible. Because the one thing the moon has is that flexibility, that changeability. It's not stuck in this is the way. The sun can sometimes get stuck in a structure, in an idea, in a way of being, and lose that flexibility to adjust to the ever-changing currents that sometimes we get to see and sometimes we don't get to see. So bringing in that ability to both create, to be into motion, to set our will, our powerful choice into motion towards something, and also to have that compassion, that balance within our system, to be in the correct ebb and the flow with doing and resting and being, and then also being able to change, adapt, and resource ourselves when we find ourselves dealing with one of those tricky moments, right? It's that beautiful mix that comes in there. So I'll opening up to, to me, it is the inspiration and the intuition of being held in that moon, of, of allowing the sun to pause, to soften, to see what else is there. That's what allows us to actually shine and to feel in that energy of that confidence, that courage to meet whatever's happening with us and also honor ourselves in the process and support others as well. It's a beautiful mix, right, of marriage of these two givers of life, these two celestial beings that really are within us that can help us open up to maximizing that empowerment and that receptivity and being able to move with the, the changing tides. So if it feels good to you, I just invite you to take a moment. Take a nice deep breath in and out. And really feel into this opening of what is present within you that you would love to let shine more. To allow yourself to step into courageous movement with that might bring you into the unknown, right? Out into the maze. And with that desire, that heart's desires, what are some of the fears, worries, concerns, confusions that are always present when we start to stride out and to step into the unknown? It's just natural, it's always there, right? And just go ahead and write them down. Like this part maybe is worried, like what if it doesn't work? Or what if it works and I actually get what I want? Then what, you know, like, or, um, well, what if somebody else doesn't come with me, right? That little one that he was like, come on, come on, come with me. It's fine. You know, what if somebody doesn't come with, right? And just take a moment and feel, and then ask compassionately, well, how can I tend to those fears and those worries? One might be just to say, hey, you know, we're just going to have to to play it as we go and adjust as needed. So kind of pull up a chair and, and we're going to keep moving, you know. One might be to tend to a really tender, wounded part that needs your support so it can remember that that sun is within you and the moon is within you too. And then just asking, opening up to that beautiful guidance of the moon within, right? The sun is coming to Cancer. So opening up to that guidance within and saying, what would your heart or your soul like to share with you? The writings on the wall so that you know that you're not alone, that that intuition is there to help you when you might feel lost, overwhelmed, separate, isolated that there is that support within you. And what would that be right now? And how can you each day connect into this beautiful heart space of yours so that you feel that support, that inspiration, that intuition, 
that can then guide how to move throughout that day with your structure, with your choice, with your actions, right? With that self-leadership. Allowing yourself to shine. And just get an image maybe of how these two energies are currently working within you and how would you like them to work? You know, I keep wanting to bring my hands together and say they're there to support each other, right? To help when one's struggling, the other one can kind of come in and intend to. When one's feeling too lost and maybe doubt or fears, the courage can come in, the self-leadership, the like, hey, we got this. There's this inner fire within us. And just feel into those. And just set the intention right now that as we move through the solstice energy and we move into the next beautiful season for you, whether that is summer or winter, like as you move into that, that everything that you need to help you dance with that energy to bubble up into the beautiful creations of what could be possible or expanding with the creations that you've already started and want to shine with and play with and interact with, that both of those will be there for you. And your job setting that intention right now is I want to allow my attention to flow to the signs of the universe, the writing on the wall that's coming in to saying, hey, I know you might be afraid, but here you might feel lost, but here's connection, here's opportunity, here's inspiration. And so your job, your challenge in this beautiful meditation is to say, yes, I'm willing to flow with one, having an awareness open for that. <laughs> excuse me. Sorry, I have a bit of a cold coming on this summer. And then I'm also willing to be in the movement with that and that expression, opening up that fish shocker, which apparently has some issues going on right now, either for myself or for the whole as I'm holding this, and just welcoming that in, that beautiful power. So just calling those energies in, welcoming them, and inviting them to help support you as you move forward throughout today, but also throughout this next season. And so it is. I hope that this practice is helpful. You can revisit it whenever you want. Pull this up whenever you feel isolated, alone, kind of caught off guard, that this is a great practice to help you reground, reconnect to the givers of life within you, the need to be nourished and held and supported and to receive and to give and to do and to be in that beautiful flow of what is correct for you. Michelle Hollingbrooks offering you light, love, and joy on this beautiful solstice. Bye!